Good morning. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, I am definitely doing a lot better than I did yesterday. Um, this is uh, day seven, which is love, believes, something. Love believes the least. Give me a second. I'm going to see if there's a contents. See, blah, blah, this book. Oh, crap. There's no recording. Okay. Uh, love. I'm, I, I'm assuming it's best. Love believes the best. Um, believes the, and then has this weird word I can't even pronounce Anywho, day seven. Love believes all things, hopes all things. First Corinthians thirteen seven. In the deep and private corridors of your heart, there's a room. It's called the appreciation room. It's where your thoughts go when you encounter positive and in, and encouraging things about your spouse. And then every so often, you enjoy visiting this special place. On the walls are written kind words and phrases describing the kind of the good attributes of your mate. These may include characteristics like honest and intelligence or phases, phrases like diligent worker, wonderful cook, or beautiful eyes. They are things you're that you're, you've discovered about in about your husband or wife that have embedded themselves in your memory. When you think about these things, you appreciate Appreciation for your spouse begins to increase. In fact, the more time you spend meditating, meditating on these positive attributes, the more grateful you are for your mate. Most things in the appreciation room were likely written in the initial stage of the relationship. You could summarize them as things like you like and respected about your loved one. They were true, honorable, or good, and you spent a great deal of time dwelling on them in this room before you were married. But you may have found that you don't visit this special room as often as you once did. That's, that's because there is another competing room nearby. Dawn, another dark corridor of your heart, lies the depreciation room, and unfortunately you, you visit there as well. On its walls are written the things that bother and irritate you about your spouse. These things were placed there out of frustration, hurt feelings, and the disappointment of unmet expectations. This room is lined with the weaknesses and failures of your husband or wife. Their bad habits, hurtful words, and poor decisions are written in large letters that cover the wall from one end to the other. If you stay in this room long enough, you get depressed and start expressing things like, my wife is so selfish, or my husband can be such a jerk, or maybe I think I married the wrong person. Some, peop some people write very hateful things in this room where... where where tell-off statements are rehearsed for the next argument. Emotional injuries fester here, adding more scratching marks to the walls. It's where ammunition is kept for the next big fight, and bitterness is allowed to spread like a disease. People fall out of love here. But know this, spending time in the depreciation room kills marriages. Divorces are plotted in this room, and violent plans are schemed. The more time you spend in this place, the more your heart devalues your spouse. It begins the moment you walk in the door, and you care for them lessens with every second that ticks by. You may say, but these things are true. Yes, but so are the things in the appreciation room. Everyone fails and has areas that need growth. Everyone has unresolved issues, hurts, and personal baggage. That is sad aspect. That is, this is a sad aspect of being human. We have all sinned. But we all have this unfortunate tendency to downplay our own negative attributes while putting our partner's failures under a magnifying glass. Let's get down to the real issue here. Love knows about the depreciation room and does not live in denial that it exists. But love chooses not to live there. You must decide to stop running to this room and, li and lingering there after every frustrating event in your relationship. It does you no good and drains the joy out of your marriage. Love chooses to believe the best about people. Okay, so it is best. It gives them the benefit of the doubt. It refuses to fill 
in the unknowns with negative assumptions. And when our worst hopes are proven to be true, love makes every effort to deal with them and move forward as much as possible. Love focuses on the positives. On the positive, sorry. It's time to start thinking differently. It's time to let love lead your thoughts and your focus. The only reason you should glance at the door of the septum room is to know how to pray for your spouse. And the only reason you should ever go to this room is to write covered in love in huge long, huge letters across the walls. It's time to move into the appreciation room to settle down and make it your home. As you choose to meditate on the positives, you will learn that many more wonderful characteristics Character qualities could be written across these walls. Your spouse is a living, breathing, endless book to be read. Dreams and hopes have yet to be realized. Talents and abilities may be discovered like hidden treasures. But the choice to explore them starts with a decision by you. You must develop the habit of reigning in your negative thoughts and focus on the positive attributes of your mate. This is a crucial step as you learn to lead your heart to truly love your spouse. It is a decision that you make whether they deserve it or not. Today's Dare For today's Dare, get two sheets of paper. On the first one, spend a few minutes writing out positive things about your spouse. Then do the same with the negative things on the second sheet. Place both sheets in a secret place for another day. There is a different purpose and plan for each at some point during the remainder of the day. Pick a positive attribute from the first list and thank your spouse for having this characteristic. Check here when you complete today's dare. Which list was easier to make? What did this reveal about your thoughts? What attributes did you think your spouse, thank your spouse for having? You know, as I read this book, I'm starting to see that I'm living this book because I just did this the, the, the day before yesterday, this very thing, not the list, per se, but I was going through and thanking my, not my spouse yet, but I'm, I'm hoping through the grace of God, my, my future spouse, I was thanking her for all that she's been doing lately. Um, she's been so kind to me and helping me work through my baggage with the work situation. Um, even yesterday, she was very kind and very understanding and like was very supportive and that's one thing that actually I like about her she's very supportive and she's very kind and I know she's hard on herself a lot and still does not see herself this way she sees herself as more um, impatient which she can be but one of the things I like about her is that she's always self-improving self-growing self-changing always on you know the road of her heart working on fixing things and that's one of the things I appreciate about her is that she won't give up on herself um, one of the things I appreciate about her is the fact that that the Holy Spirit is working on her in such a way that she will say things like "We should we pray about this should we stop and talk to God about this she's a new world Christian and I love it I absolutely love it to death and I'd love her even if she wasn't a Christian but the fact that she was willing to remind me hey should we stop and pray about this means a lot to me um, also she's been financially helping me as well with food and clothes for work and even fun stuff she's been, help she's been helping me when it comes to going out and doing fun stuff and I really appreciate the fact that she's she has a heart to share her wealth with me that she has. And now I will be blunt. I'm not trying. I'm not taking advantage of her. I'm not. None of that, at all. Just so we're clear. Um, I don't care what people think. What it may or may not look like. I know me very well, and I'm not using her. Um, I need to get going. I need to go to go to Tanya's actually and eat breakfast and then head up to Snow Joe. It's a warehouse. They have a janitorial job there, and I think God's called me to be a janitor. 
<laughs> I swear, I, I, I do not think there's any other job. You know, I thought I would try these glasses on again, but these just seem not to be cutting it for me today. So I'm going to go back to the other pair. Anywho, thank you for watching.